this video, we'll show you how to add a MediaLink router to your existing network via a wired connection so you can extend the wireless signal throughout your home. This can be done with any MediaLink router, but for this video, the steps will apply to our 300N models. First, connect your MediaLink router to your original router or an Ethernet port that is connected to your original router. Plug an Ethernet cable into the blue WAN port on the MediaLink router. This setup can be done with an Ethernet cable coming from your original router directly to the MediaLink router, or you may have Ethernet run throughout your home into different rooms. In that case, you can use any of the Ethernet ports in those rooms that run back to your original router. Or if you don't have Ethernet run throughout your house and you'd rather not do that, we have a product called Powerline Adapters that accomplishes the same goal without having to run the cable. The MediaLink Powerline Adapter Kit comes with two small adapters. One adapter is plugged into an electrical outlet near your original router and then connects to that router via Ethernet. The second adapter is plugged into an electrical outlet where you want to set up a second router for more wireless coverage. Then connect the second adapter to your second router via Ethernet. It's as simple as that and you don't have to run Ethernet throughout your home. Whether you're using power line adapters or a straight Ethernet connection, once you have the MediaLink router connected to your original router, next you'll want to connect your computer to the MediaLink router. Connect your computer to the router using an Ethernet cable to one of the yellow LAN ports on the router. Once you have your computer connected to the router with an Ethernet cable, open an internet browser and type in the address bar 192.168.8.1 and click enter. Enter the username and password, which are both admin, A-D-M-I-N, in all lowercase letters by default. Then click Advanced Settings, look for the Gateway Address, which will start with 192, 172, or 10 dot, and take note of that number. Once you have the IP address, also known as the default gateway from the original router, disconnect the cable going into the blue WAN port of the MediaLink router, but keep your computer plugged into one of the yellow ports. Then click LAN Settings. Change the IP address here to the same IP address as your original router, but change the last number. For example, if your original router's IP address is 192.168.0.1, then make this MediaLink router's IP address 192.168.0.2. The original router uses 192.168.1.1, then make this MediaLink router 192.168.1.2, and so on. As long as the fourth number is different, then it'll work. Click Apply, and then click OK to reboot the router. Click Basic Settings at the top right corner of the screen to return to the Quick Setup page. Here you can change the name of the network to what you want people to see when they connect their wireless devices. This is called the SSID. Then set your wireless password. This is what people will use to join your wireless network. Anyone that does not have this password will not be able to join the network. Then click Apply. Once the changes are applied, click DHCP Server. Then uncheck Enable to disable the DHCP server on this MediaLink router. Click Apply and click OK. Now reconnect the cable from the original router to a yellow LAN port on the MediaLink router. At this point, there will be two Ethernet cables connected to two yellow ports on the MediaLink router and the blue WAN port will be empty. You should now be able to access the internet through a wired connection or through a wireless connection to this MediaLink router. If you can access the internet, double check the ethernet connection coming from the original router. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email. Thanks for choosing MediaBridge.